Hello and welcome to New Horizon Vineyards message on this Sunday morning. It's really lovely to have you with us and I hope that you will find that God speaks to you right where you're at. Let's open in prayer. Father God, thank you that you are sovereign. You are sovereign over all, over our lives, over the details of our lives and that you love us, you strengthen us, and you comfort us. And God, we ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and meet each one of us right where we're at. May we have open ears and open hearts to hear your voice, and may your words be embedded deep in our spirits. May everything that is not of you simply fall to the ground, but everything that is of you for those things, may we be good, rich soil. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, I have a message, an altogether lovely message for others and for mothers. When I think about mothers, obviously I'll think about women. And when women look in the mirror, there are questions that they ask themselves. John Eldridge has written a book called Captivating. And in it, he talks about women and their deep desire to be captivating. But when we look in the mirror, as women, we put a question mark behind that. Am I captivating? Am I beautiful? Am I pretty? Am I fat? Am I thin? Am I enough? Am I old? Am I not there yet? Is my hair too long, too short? We place question marks at the end of words like captivating. And John Eldridge says that the question that a young girl needs answered in her life is, am I lovely? Am I lovely? Sometimes in our lives, we find that the ones who love us, they get the answer to this question wrong. And sometimes we hear their answer incorrectly. And that becomes a fundamental part of who we see ourselves to be if we look in any kind of mirror be it physical or spiritual or emotional or mental. Today, I want you to get yourself a mirror. And I'm not only speaking to the women, I am speaking to the men as well. This is a message for others and mothers. And the message is that you are altogether lovely. It is a message for mothers too, and mothers today, we celebrate you. We celebrate your wisdom and your grace, your strength, your fortitude, your courage, your bravery, your perseverance, how true you are, how vulnerable you are, the sacrificial choices that you make, we celebrate you and we thank you, mothers. However your mothering comes to you today, we are grateful for you and we love you. Sometimes, as I mentioned, mothering is about mentoring. It's about teaching and training younger women and sometimes older women in the ways of God. And you'll see that reflected in Titus 2. 
it's a command. It is for us to follow. It is about raising other spiritual mothers who will continue to mother others down the generations. And today God wants to say to you, let me be your mirror. Baz Luhrmann has a song called Everybody's Free and it says, do not read beauty magazines. They will only make you feel ugly. Today God says, let me be your mirror. This is for men too. I know that men don't have the opportunity to speak about it as much, but they also have questions that they ask themselves when they look in the mirror. Am I, am I, am I? And they place their own adjectives there. And they put their own question marks. So men, for you too, allow God to be your mirror. He has something to say to you today. The evil queen in Snow White asks the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And of course, someone else gets placed in that placeholder. But today, God is not saying that. If he is your mirror, he is saying that you are altogether lovely. You are altogether lovely, my darling. There is no flaw in you. This scripture comes from um, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 7, and it's speaking about Solomon and his Shulamite maid. But by extension, this is God speaking to his people. This is God speaking to you. You are altogether lovely, my darling. There is no flaw in you. So for those of you that miss me, here is my picture. And yes, this is a Zoom picture. So you can see it's not the most flattering of pictures. And for those of you that are working from home, perhaps Zoom has become a familiar place to be, as it has for me. And I wonder if you find yourself looking at your picture more than you do at the picture of others. The largest nose in living history. That double chin. Those frown lines. Have I had the sun in my face my entire life? Oh, there's Abby's lunch on my scarf. I hope no one can see that. Oh, there are those dark, saggy bags under my eyes from a hundred nights taking my daughter to the toilet in the middle of the night. Oh, that crazy hair, it's honestly never anything other than crazy. That grey that just doesn't colour. Oh, the scar on my lip. Does anyone else see that? My mother still thinks she's a bad mother because I fell onto the wheel of my pram. Nobody notices, mom. Nobody notices. And then there's the things that Zoom doesn't see. The mud on my leggings from playing in the mud with my daughter. 
the hole in my legging that she keeps putting her finger in. The bare feet, because it's so hot in here. Oh, and that cellulite underneath. Oh my goodness, biggest bum in history. No, whatever your Zoom picture looks like, when you look in the mirror that is God, he says, you are all together lovely, all together lovely. He says, you are wonderful. Psalm 139 and verses 13 to 16 say, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You are wonderful, God says. You are wonderful. You are altogether lovely. You are altogether lovely, my darling. There is no flaw in you. You are priceless. Matthew 10 verses 30 to 31 says, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You are priceless. God says today, you are my masterpiece. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. You are God's masterpiece. You are altogether lovely. You are God's masterpiece. You are priceless. You, yes, you looking in the mirror with all of those questions with all of those question marks against all of those words, you are altogether lovely. You are his masterpiece. Every single part of you was his 100% intention. You are priceless. Ye as mere vert, as milliona mosis. You are worth more than many, many sparrows. You are priceless to God. Look into the mirror that is me, says God. You are all together lovely. You. You sitting there saying that's not possible. That's not possible. 
you, God says, you are altogether lovely. Your smile, the way your eyes light up, the way you laugh, the way your hair falls, the way you walk and sit and speak to people, the way you work, the way you play, you are altogether lovely. Hear God today. Let it sink deep into your soul. God says, you are altogether lovely, my darling. There is no flaw in you. Let's pray. Oh God, some of these truths are hard for us to hear, hard for us to believe. We want to push them away from ourselves. That is somebody else. That is not the whole truth. That is not what you're saying to me today. Holy Spirit, won't you wash us clean in our minds, in our hearts? in our beings, that the lies of the enemies, the enemy of our souls would just fall away and we would hear your truth deep in our beings today. Thank you, God, that you can be our mirror and that is your desire. Speak to us, each one individually, about how you see us and how you see that we are all together lovely in Jesus name